Royal Soap Resource. Ready to go. Cardiac arrest, five minutes. X-ray. Hello, resource. We've got trauma. And then five mils of rope for three. Something has triggered that fatal rhythm in his heart. Yeah, we have some <laughs> That's presumably dislocated looking at the angle as well. She head planted on the floor, neck flexed backwards, and then she laid still. Deep breath in and out. She may have a cervical spine injury. She's had a long period of downtime, so she's young. We need to do everything we can. Resource staff there is going to help. It's another one going down to see it, so I think. So, Carolyn, I've got a DKA here. Hello, Stoke Resource. Is that the shoulders, is it? So, we've got word that there's a really sick asthmatic coming in. They've just rang to say that the patient's peri arrest, which basically means they're on the verge of basically stopping breathing. You have a really heightened awareness that you're about to receive probably one of the sickest patients you'll ever see. So, obviously they're worried enough that they've then given us the heads up that this patient's really not well. I think she's 28. So no, not very old at all. And if she's not already arrested by the time she gets here, it could mean that she could arrest very quickly. Uh, and if we get a ventilator in here as well. When you're that close to death, every second counts. Uh, we get a big bag of fluids as well. Normal saline? Yeah, right? litre of saline, please. Yeah. So we've got NEV, steroids, arrest drugs, magnesium. So, I mean, the worst is that she arrests before she even gets here. In which case, you know, when asthmatics, young asthmatics, when they're this sick, um, they're really difficult to get back because their airways are so brittle. Yep, healed it. Okay, we're going three, one, two, three. So this is Laura. Laura suffers with brittle asthma. Around about 25 to 10 this evening, she's starting with shortness of breath. She's starting to form nebulizer therapy, but to no avail. She's had multiple nebulizers, salbutamol, hypertrophium. She's had hydrocortisone 100 milligrams. GCS has been going down and down and down. She's had IV adrenaline. She's had, no, she's had IM adrenaline. She's got multiple health problems as well. She um, got a red card or anything like that? Nothing Not like that, that we were made aware of, no. Um, family are on the way. We're giving her everything we can, to be honest. Uh, going downhill. Check. Um, okay, three cards. Everyone's doing everything at the same time. Someone's assessing the airway, someone else is dealing with breathing, and someone else's circulation, putting IV lines in to make sure that this patient has the best chance of survival. So what's your name? Dying of an asthma attack is a real possibility. I've got another one. Yeah, please. Uh, fast bleed the anesthetic reg to resource, please. Hello. Oh, right. Can you just squeeze my finger for me? Have you got any pain at all? Oh. How old are you? Not being able to breathe and being conscious of the fact that you literally can't get any air out of your lungs. You must almost feel like drowning. Can you feel a radio pulse? Um, yeah. Can you feel one? One of the drugs that work really quickly is adrenaline. The drug that in people's inhalers, you can get a liquid form of that and, and start infusing it through an IV line. You can give you know, intravenous steroids. If you're able to turn them around in this immediate stage, these other medications are then taking effect to try and keep the patient stable. Yeah. 
Just trying to pre optionate her and get our oxygen levels up because they're really low at the moment. IV access times two. Yeah, section working. Is it on? Yes, it's here. Okay. BVM walker set circuit's all connected. CO2 is connected. The wingoscope we've got a size four blade. It's working. Deteriorated from a GCS point of view. Yeah, became peri arrest. They'd given her IM adrenaline, try and improve her breathing. Other oh, drugs that she had? Has she had any? Um... She's, magnesium's going through multiple, yeah. multiple nerves, steroids, very little effect. Yeah. Um, Sat to 70% on the nerves, so it's not to do Yeah, brilliant. I've got ketamine and rock here. Is she easy? Uh, she has got an entry actually, and she has managed one or two words. Um, like I say, but I think it's probably the adrenaline that's helped. Can we get x-ray round as well, please? What's your name, sweetheart? Uh, uh, I think it's Laura. Is Hello. your name Laura? Hi, Laura. Yeah. Hi, Laura. My name's Terry. I'm one of the doctors. Hi. When you see people younger than yourself brought in with life-threatening situations who might or might not make it, it makes you stop and think, this could have been me. Oh, gas on Neb. She was sat to 70, so put on 100%. That's fine. I was just called for uh, uh, magnesium's gone. We thought 500 might be. Perfect. Uh, that's perfect. So she's doing a bit better um, than obviously when she first came in. Hopefully, we're going to get away with not needing to put her to sleep, which is obviously better for her. So, we're going to put her on something that's going to help her breathing, but uh, it's not quite as bad as having to put a tube down her throat. She's still sick, but she's not, you know, we've, we've dragged her back from basically her arresting. So, you know, we've managed to improve her ventilation. She's getting oxygen in now and blood pressure stabilized. Paramedics were having to give her adrenaline and stuff like that, you know. So for asthmatics, that's reserved for those patients who they think are about to die. They're giving her these really powerful drugs and then ringing us back to put her on us on an increased standby because we were really worried that she was going to be so ill when she arrived that she'd stop breathing and then her heart would stop. I'm Richard, I'm one of the uh, trauma consultants here. I'm a husband here. Yeah. We were a bit worried when she first came in, but like I say, she's responded really well. Okay, good. They're going to take you downstairs shortly, all right, to the intensive care unit just to keep an eye on you overnight, okay. I'm going to leave you to it. You take care. I've only seen her like this bad a couple of times before. And it uh, still doesn't get any easier. And you just I suppose you don't know what's going to happen. Who am I ringing? Raj. Hi, Raj. Um, got a few things going on in recess. Two cardiac arrests, an arm injury, a groin pain, about four standbys in the next half an hour. Yeah? I need a trauma call going out, please. Um, limb injury, large laceration, arterial bleeding. Yeah, RSI 25. Got another RSI. Air ambulance into this one, Matt. Land ambulance into that one. Hello, a and Stoke this off. And then this one. So this is uh, the HGV oh, has hit her passenger side. This is a 38-year-old female who's been presented today with an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. She was driving along the M6 motorway, where we understand she had a cardiac arrest whilst driving, um, and had an accident or a collision um, following that. A young patient with a cardiac arrest, it's completely unexpected. No underlying problems, and then the next minute they've had a cardiac arrest. This is a 38-year-old female who's presented having had a cardiac arrest whilst driving um, on the motorway. She's had a long period of downtime, so people doing CPR rather than her own heartbeat. She's young, we need to do everything we can. So Matt, we'll convert to a tube, yeah. 
So we sent Bloods off as unknown, so we need to keep her as unknown yeah, till that's fine. If there's nothing on the system anymore, it's related to the we'll keep her unknown for now. Sorry, Jackie, what? Change the tube, please. We need to warm her up. Yeah, just a blanket under her head as well. Yeah. The anaesthetist will manage the airways to allow ventilation um, and provide oxygen with the highest concentration that is possible. The plan now is to try and normalise everything that we possibly can, including you know, blood pressure, heart rate, heart rhythm, oxygen levels, blood sugar, everything as much as possible to allow the best circumstances for her to recover. If you like. I had a chat with Rob Butler, yeah. the consultant. He's happy if you don't think anything else is going on to Andrea. Yeah. Once we've got our big lines in, uh, we'll go to scan. Okay. I'll update you with that. Okay. And then when you're ready. Yeah. Still got thermal pulse. I'm just a resource with this cardiac arrest that's come in. She's had how long she's been down for? About an hour, but with good CPR and she was close by when it happened. The phrase downtime means that her heart wasn't beating for itself for an hour. You don't get the same amount of oxygen going to the brain as you do when you've got your own heartbeat. Matt, give us some. Yeah. Some will be getting access, giving drugs, doing some blood tests to try and ascertain why the cardiac arrest happened in the first place. Hayley, with your fifth pair of hands, yeah, the metraminol. This is. We've just got the one hand around the ring. So far, love, yes. Yeah. So we just need to try and get better monitoring, better access, whilst we wait to go to the cath lab for an angiogram to look and see if they can figure out why she's had a cardiac arrest this morning. And the needle from the Vigon. The central line is a catheter that's inserted into one of the big veins in the body that allows us to deliver certain medications. These are this lady's That's Matt's just got a central line and she's got an A-line, she's tubed. Needle from the arterial line. The arterial line is a small, narrow catheter that is inserted into an artery that continuously monitors blood pressure. Our blood pressure's come up, which is good. So, well, there's some stage in her own rhythm now for a good half an hour, which is good. To get an output and sustain your own heartbeat after an hour of uh, downtime is unusual and maybe partly because she's young. When we see a young patient with a cardiac arrest, we think about the family because they won't be expecting this. devastating mm. knowing that just I know, a couple of minutes before the accident she was lively happy chatting and then all of a sudden her heart just stops and everything stops she wasn't sick she didn't have anything wrong with her you know at the weekend she was happy she's she was the heart and soul of the family, the family you know any party any cook-ups everything she's yeah. She's the main person, isn't she? Yeah, she is. So. She is. I just wanted to just to stay alive. That's all I wanted, just to stay alive. And that's it. Our assumption is Leslie would have got up as a, a normal day, got herself ready to work and be driving to work. And the family won't have expected her to be in the resuscitation room, certainly having had a cardiac arrest. There was a long period of time between her having a cardiac arrest and having her own rhythm. So the main concern is the effect of that on the brain. Check. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the scan will be critical. How long before we, we, we make sure we, get, we start her circulation again? Do we know? Right, yeah. So, hypoxic brain injury then. Um, no real inter um, significant bleed that I can see as yet. The foramen magnum does look quite crowded. Get that. Leslie's brain scan shows evidence of hypoxic brain injury, which is where you get injury to the brain due to lack of oxygen from the fact that she hasn't had her own heartbeat for some time. It could be life changing or life threatening. Okay, love. Thank you so much. Matt and the team will take Leslie to cath lab. The cardiologist will look after her there, have a look around into coronary arteries, and she'll then go to critical care unit. So we'll take some pictures. We're going to go right femoral. Um, if the, the blood pressure is okay at the minute, we'll put a balloon pump in at the end to get the noradrenaline down. If the coronaries are normal, we'll put the balloon pump in as soon as the coronaries are done. Any questions from anyone? Okay, no. let's press Thank on. You. The issue in this lady is she's had a very prolonged downtime from the, the event on the motorway to coming in to here. We're looking to see whether the arteries are blocked so we can treat it. People can have chest pain, they can come to the lab, they can look like they're having a heart attack, but in fact the arteries are normal, there's another cause for it. So these are normal arteries, so we're going to stop now. Yeah. Does she have an echo downstairs? No. So we get her back on the bed and we'll do a quick bedside echo yeah. to make sure what's what they're doing. Ready, steady, slide. What we don't know now is, is, is any resultant muscle damage that we see now on an ultrasound related to the primary event that's caused her to have the cardiac arrest, or is it a consequence of the fact that she was resuscitated for an hour? So at the minute, there is a certain lack of clarity about why she's had her, her arrest, whether it's primarily heart-related or whether it, there's, a, there's another reason for it. You know, it's all normal thickness. It's just not pumping very much. We'll repeat this over the next uh, couple of days if she survives the brain injury. Yeah. Waiting too long. Hello, Ralsto. Take your time, take your time. Can we have emergency drug split into there? So there's two. We do cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest. And then a limb injury that's going to be 30 minutes. 20 year old lady has fallen head first off a horse. Um, so this is 20 year old Abby. She was riding a horse five to 10 miles an hour when she went for a jump. It then dug its feet in and she went over. Mum reports that she head planted the floor, neck flexed backwards, and then she laid still. Okay. Doesn't report any loss of consciousness, she said. Mum was there at a shot. Um, Collared and boarded. She's had 12.5 milligrams of morphine. Does feel nauseous and dropped her blood pressure to 80, which is where we started fluids. Okay. So you're going to feel lots of bodies on the back. Roll. Oh. How does that feel, Abby? Nothing major. Okay. Well, your neck is sore. So she's got some severe neck pain, having fallen and hyperextended her neck. So she may have a cervical spine injury. I'm Anne Marie, one of the consultants, my love. She's feeling a bit peaky at the minute, but um, the main soreness she's got, as you know, is in her neck. So what we're going to do is we'll take around for a scan because that will give us the most detail about the bones in the neck. We'll do a head and neck and also this part of her spine as well because she's sore. So we'll get, this, get the pictures taken, we'll get the scans done and then I'll come back and let you know what's going on. Yeah, stop I'm still in shock, to be honest. It, it can't process it because we've ridden, both of us, I mean, I've been a riding instructor for 30 years, and my daughter's, you know, had horses, and some of the most horrific-looking falls, you just get up and walk away. 
and, you know, this time she just didn't. I'm concerned about her cervical spine. With a mechanism of injury, it sounds like she's hit the top of her head, hyperextended her neck. So I'd be concerned about, and she's mainly complaining of cervical spine or neck pain. I wouldn't be surprised if the CT was abnormal. Going nice on shooting them now. The scan looks okay. The bones in your neck and the bones in your back look fine. And the head scan is normal, but you've obviously, like I said to you, Abby, had a bit of a shake around on the inside, I think. That's what's making your call feel so icky. I'm sorry. Okay, nice and still for me. That'll probably feel a bit better inside. So I know you're a bit sore in the middle, aren't you? Oh, yeah, in the front as well. In the front as well? Yeah, that other side. This side? Yeah. Whiplash. So, yeah, what people used to, used to call whiplash in kind of a road traffic accident when your head goes forward and back, hers has been forced back, isn't it? So all these muscles here have been stretched. That's what's causing the spasm, is it? Mm. Just the yeah. body's gone into shock. Um, I think she's had a bump to the head as well, isn't she? So she's had a, the brain on the inside had a bit of a shake around, like a concussion. She's not broken. <laughs> she's not. She's a little bit by a little bit. All right, no problem. Good. 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 No, you're not stupid. It's good. Mum's obviously, as you would be, exceptionally concerned about her daughter. Um, so it's nice to be able to give her some good news. It was the fall that you look at and you think you're not going to get up. So. I think I just went numb because I couldn't comprehend that it was my daughter that was in that fall. But yeah, now it's over. Yeah, I'm breathing. <laughs> yeah, she's okay. So she's just feeling sick, aren't you? But that's the concussion in me. But she's gonna be okay. I'm quite sort of over now. I want to go home. <laughs> Whenever a patient is in here, everyone is very expecting that they will come out. But not everyone comes out after this situation. Unfortunately, in her case, the signs are not promising. And so we have to tell the family the truth. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Moses. I'm the consultant. I think we briefly met. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> After a cardiac arrest, uh, you can cover completely or you will die immediately. And the majority of people are in between where you survive with the varying degrees of disability to towards the other end where you are surviving uh, but you are not there. The heart is pumping, but the brain is not there. We won't know that until we we've done this bit for 24 hours. So tomorrow, we will stop everything and see whether she can uh, try and wake up. But the suggestion so far is that the brain may have been affected quite significantly. So when you try that tomorrow, and if it, if if she doesn't do wake up, do? What, what 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 would you do? What would you, where do you go from there? If she doesn't wake up, we usually give up to a maximum of three days. If there are any signs that there may be life there, because you hear of people being in a coma for a long time, this is and then why they come we, out we're going it. for the three days. Mm. That's not very long, is it? No. The reason why you, you get sometimes people going for longer than that, it depends on what caused it. Now, if she does breathe on her own, 
uh, and not wake up. She may be going into that state where she has got a heart beating, breathing, but there is no brain. She is very young. Would she like to be in that state, or would you rather say, you know, this is not what she would like? Those are the things which we should be thinking about. I don't think about that. I don't know. 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 It's entirely a family decision. <laughs> this lady, young patient, enjoying life, and then suddenly she is left in a state where she wouldn't be able to do anything of that. Withdrawing care is a medical decision with the support of the family and with the full understanding of why the medical team is doing it. Will you let me put it back on? Because your oxygen's getting worse. Do you understand? Just in case we need to give them a lot of blood. Four to three, sus, please. Where are we putting them to? The guy's been shot, he's getting sick. Hello, sir. Was it bleeding quite a lot? Yes. I had a shot of the pheasant, and as I cracked it to, to take the cartridge out, uh, it was obviously pointing to the ground. Yeah. I've shot myself in the foot. <laughs> no, it's just it's triggered it. Triggered it okay. There's this shit there. Shot there. Oh, yeah. Obviously, some of the shot has hit part of the bone. So you've got a small fracture of your ankle as well. You've been lucky in the fact that it's all just stayed on this side of the ankle. Okay. Your foot is still attached to the end of your leg. You know, and yeah. the nerves and the blood vessels appear to mainly be working. I'm going to stick to fishing. No, just check the light. I don't get that said to you. It's Christine, <laughs> who's 89, hit by a motorcycle, probably about 30 miles an hour. And the lawyer reports of the motorcycle, back of the motorcycle, catching the back of her ankle. She's got over six inches by two inches, loss of tissue, very unstable fracture. Oh! Very open. Oh! She's had two morphine and then thirty ketamine titrated. Does it hurt anywhere? Let's get right side out then. Elderly patients are doubly worrying because they have a much higher chance of having more serious medical conditions running alongside their injuries, which impair their ability to survive the injury in the first place. Oh! Is there any pain along here, along your collarbones? I've got my collarbones. I'm glad you've brought those with you. Those are important. Here, yeah. There. They're not sore though. They're not. Good. How does your tummy feel when I prod oh, it? Oh, I feel sick. Okay. I've got a bowl for me, for me. It's important I just have a little feel to see if anything's hurting. Okay. I don't know what you want to do, whether you want to come here or what, but it's a leg. My leg is a real mess. We'll have to do some x-rays of the left leg because we're pretty sure you've probably broken one of your bones down there. Oh, no. Well, tell me where I am now. This is the big hospital, no, yeah, I'm, in Stoke. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. It's OK. I'm here. What's this? Uh, What's this? You're in hospital. You've been knocked over. You are. You've been knocked over crossing the road. So they brought you to hospital. 
We've been here before with her ankle. She's got pins and plates in her ankle. In that left one. Where have you been? I've been up to see the Doberman ladies. Do you remember? And we think a bit of diabetes, is that right? Anything else that you know of, Medicare? Kidneys don't function. I forget what they call it. Yeah. Wounds in the lower leg, particularly the anterior lower leg, so the front of the shin, are notoriously difficult to heal. Yeah, I'd say, and that's presumably dislocated looking at the angle it's at. It's already been pinned and plated in the past, apparently. We're having a look at your poorly foot. Your worry is always whether something's being masked underneath somewhere else. Oh, my leg! Oh! Oh, wow! We're going to do some x-rays now, okay. You never know, we just might find something lurking, mightn't we? But we'll find out one way or the other, just make sure. That way. So the... Sorry, please. A major chunk of it's about there, that's the okay. worst of the wound. Alright, so we'll get the most on the first fib if we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. So now she's broken right above the pin and plate. Well, that's a bit less than ideal, eh? Well, the trouble is, when you're nearly 90, lots of things end up being more of a problem than they might otherwise be. She'll have issues in healing it. She's diabetic, which makes healing even more difficult. She's elderly, which makes it more difficult still. She's going to need more than one operation because they're not going to be able to fix that and close all of the defect in one go, I don't think. There's still potentially quite a few hurdles for her to clear. If this leg is to come off and an amputation in this age is almost certainly going to render somebody wheelchair bound. Okay, cardiac arrest, okay. Yep, bye. We've got cardiac arrest coming in. Rosk. Okay. So they are still ventilating him a little bit. 61 year old collapse. Return of spontaneous circulation, so Rosk for short. What stopped his heart? I don't have any knowns. The only knowns I have is that there's a patient coming whose heart is now beating and wasn't. So it was VF2 shocks, apparently, and then Rosk. Have we got somebody ready with an ECG machine? We'll want one of those fairly soon. Do you want to hand over them? This is Hugh. Yeah. 61 year old male, been out running. Yeah. Out in six. Okay. Come back to his car, complained, he said, he said he felt hot. Sat in the car, he's collapsed, witness collapse. We dragged him out, CPR started straight away. How long do you reckon between you getting the call and you getting there? No more than three or four minutes. No more than three or four? Yeah. And there was CPR still so, ongoing when you yeah. got there? Was yeah. it reasonable? Yeah, she was a nurse. Not much the matter in his chest. It sounds a bit upper airway. That's you. There's nothing screaming am I on the monitor right now. <laughs> Hell's teeth. Yeah. What's his pupils doing? Is that eight, four, five, six, six, mm. Yeah, no. A number of cardiac arrests I've personally dealt with who've returned to normal life. I could probably count them on the fingers of two hands in 20 years. Sorry, sir. I think we'll get him. Get him sleep still, less clammy, and we'll get a better idea. <laughs> Have you got syringes handy for blood? Jamil or not. Yeah, yeah, you've got everything cool. He's obviously been fit enough to go for a run today. I mean, he's 61, but he, he's clearly, I mean, he's got his knee braces on, but I don't know much more in terms of his past history. Something has triggered that fatal rhythm in his heart. Question is now what? His major lucky break is somebody passing who knew how to do good CPR almost immediately after his cardiac arrest. Then there was a passing ambulance crew very, very close by. Without those two things having happened for him, 
the chances of us then being able to do anything for him now would be tiny. Next thing, speak to those relatives, get that off my mental tabletop. I'll be back in five minutes. Potassium 3.7, glucose was 15, um, sodium was 138, calcium was fine. I've had a conversation with wife who's at home. Wife separated from him. Right. He was with a new girlfriend, I think. Um, his past medical history, according to wife, is one of the, the running's a relatively new thing. Okay. He's been relatively indolent for a large chunk of his life. We want to take him to the cath lab. You want right. to take him to the cath lab? Right, right now. Right. It is coming. You're not guaranteed to survive going to the cath lab. When I was younger, I used to assume when you got into the cath lab, everything would be well and it would be all wine and roses, but it clearly isn't for everybody. Let's hope he makes it. Anti-epilepsy given to her now because when we tried to reduce the station this morning she started seizing. Okay. So we're going to give her, we're just giving her a loading dose, we're going to start her on regular anti-epileptics. I'll grab this and check. Okay, thank you. Did you hear what she said or you didn't hear? They tried to reduce it but she had a seizure so they had to put it back up. I don't know what's going on. We just need to relax. <laughs> don't stress. It's very, very hard to take him. And it's just unveiling itself by the hour, so we're just dealing with it as best we can. The possibility of having to make that decision for their sister not to be amongst us anymore. It's now easier for the, the parents because we brought them all into this world. Very difficult. Should that be the case? And we, we're still hoping. attack leading to cardiac arrest is the blockage of the arteries. Are you cordial please? Okay, stop now. It's one of the major arteries blocked. Where do you want them put in? Three and six. Yeah. Yeah, get him up. I'll just give him a once over and I'll be back. Hiya, oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just in the middle of a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, working in the garden, um, do the grammar boards, lift one of them up to slide it in. It's fell back with it to land on his chest. It weighs about 55 kilograms. Nice to push it off. Welcome to the wonderful world of popped lung. Yeah, okay. Pain, the side, crush yeah. the chest, lower back. Let's be complaining some pin and needles. And his short breath. Leg. But he was resting around about 38. He's had 10 minutes of morphine. Yeah, got the phone set up. He's a bit more relaxed now. Um, Are you worried about his neck? It was just in fact with the back pain. You're otherwise fitting well, sir. Smoking. If you didn't have a concrete block land on you. Is this where the kind of top edge of it caught you? Yeah. As it hit you? Yeah. Now you've gone down and sort of almost overextended over the wall. Yeah. Not the way you'd want to go the, the other way, the uh, way your spine really doesn't want to go. Yeah. Okay. As you got folded over that thing, you've, you've, you've bent the bones really in the way that 
the spine isn't designed to go. And yeah. more of the weight at this side, so... Okay. If I pick your leg up, does that give you any grief anyway? Yeah, yeah it does. Back. Where? Let me back. Yeah. Okay. I pick the left foot up. Does well, that... My arms just went funny there. Does that give you any grief? That one's all right, that one is. So when I did that to your slight, leg, you got... Slight pain, but I can okay. feel it on this side, the slight pain. I'm just going to see to your collarbones to pelvis. Yeah. We'll get your folks in to you now. We'll find out who's here, shall we? Yeah. I'll go find them and bring them through to you. All right. Number one. On the left. On the left as you go in. Yep, yeah, cool. If you snap your spine, maybe you're in a wheelchair. Maybe you don't walk again. You know, these limbs are all working, but every time I move that, he gets a funny shooting pain, which makes me wonder about what's happening with the spinal cord. I think people assume when you do this job, you want people to be badly smashed and stuff. And I just really don't, because it's just awful when they are. Um, so. Hello, are you chancy with Adrian? Yeah. Yes, I'm his mother. This is his boss. He said he said you'd be here. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he knows that's what, that's, what he, that's what he that's what he bet his fiver on. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering about his spine. Is the thing I'm most wondering about. <laughs> You've got quite a crowd, actually. Right, eh? <laughs> you don't feel a bit better now, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. At least you breathe a bit better, mate. Anyway, can't you? Oh yeah. Back at work tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Get recons and proper views in a bit. There's no blinding the obvious burst fracture though, is there? So nothing obvious, but we'll have a look next door. Cool, bro. Thank you. Oh, Turns out you'll live to plaster another day. Oh, oh, um, no Scan say actually fine. Scan say no organ injury, no spinal injury. Yeah. In order to get home, you're going to need to be able to pee for us and going to be able to walk around under your own steam. So if you can do both of those two things without going all pale and interesting, we're going to be able to release you back into the <laughs> wild. All right. Yeah. Okay. Back in a minute. Can we come in? Uh, I'm very son. Oh, his son. Okay. Hello. How are you? I'm better than the last time I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> this is good to see an excellent recovery. Good to see you. Oh, okay. Thank you. No, I'll thank come. You. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right. Yesterday you were asking about when you can run. So, Friday you died. Wednesday you were asking about when can you run. <laughs> I think you were there when, when I woke up. Yeah. I really didn't know what happened. So I was out of it for a couple of days before I knew what was happening. From Friday, I just um, the odds were looking against us. So. Um, to be where we are today, it's just incredible. And you had phoned me at 5.30 on Friday. I didn't answer, so uh, I might get a little bit better at answering the phone, because that might have been the last conversation I'd had with him. Nothing's broke after 60 kilos landed on me. <sighs> it's immediately apparent to us in the resuscitation room who's been lucky and who hasn't. We're not left untouched by what we do for a living. You do have your little moment of reflection. Could I have learnt anything? Could I have done anything different? Six, please. Six, please. Six, please. Seven, please. Eight, please. Nine, 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 Just fight your way in. 
He's got a stab wound right in the middle of his back. Stab wounds everywhere. He's had an out of hospital cardiac arrest. Just hold fire a minute because I would imagine he's going to arrest him in a minute. Do you remember what was the last time you woke up and you were well? Do you remember the time? She's woken up with a stroke. We don't have a time of onset. 